Sorry about the noise, but that's our next guest Woo! enjoying the, the the beautiful, beautiful California surfing music. Speaking of outdoor activities, rip currents have been making headlines lately uh, due to 10 recent deaths along the Gulf of Mexico beaches across Florida's Panhandles and Mobile, Alabama. Uh, that's been attributed to them. So we are lucky to have the first husband right here, uh, Tim Deegan. The first husband? Well, wow. Well, that's, that's what they named the the, 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 is that the spouse of, uh, is that of, of uh, female think, think leaders of state or whatever. First dude is as high as I can say. Okay, first dude it is. Okay. It's Tim right. Deegan, longtime meteorologist for First Coast News, an avid surfer, is here with some tips on how to avoid rip currents and what to do if you see them. Well, I'll tell you, Tim, on Monday I saw a, a social media photo. I don't know where it was from, but it was taken from a hotel balcony, and it showed a riptide. It just showed that current of water being pulled right out. Um, and, and we have them here. We have lost everybody from an ex-NFL football player to a firefighter from Georgia on the West Coast uh, and, and the Bay County Sheriff annoyed that people, when their deputies tell them, don't go in the water, it's a double red flag, flag warning, they get yelled at and cursed at. So you tell me, what causes a riptide? What causes that outflow that can take you out uh, into nasty water where you can't swim? So just to underline what you talked about, um, as bad as hurricanes are, if you just look at the average deaths per year in Georgia and Florida. More people die from drownings than die from hurricanes. Um, so, it, so it is a big problem. Um, it's too bad all of us that are at the beach but at sea level can't see what you talked about from the condo, right? Yeah. We could all look down and see that. Um, that's why, to me, you should always go where the lifeguards are and listen to the lifeguards. But as far as your first question, what causes it? Like anything in nature, Mother Nature is trying to keep a balance. And so those waves are pushing water toward the ocean, I mean toward the beach. It's got to find a way out. Um, and just like a river's current is going to be strongest where that channel is, um, the ocean is going to find where the channel is. And so the rip current wants to take you out. Um, if I could, and I understand why we talk about the rip tide, the rip current, locals here tend to call it runouts. I understand why we focus on that but let's face it we all hear the tip when you find yourself in a rip current don't panic uh if we're human we're probably going to panic so i want to I attempt something this morning and that is as a prevention to keep you from getting in the rip current i think sometimes something that we miss is when it's most dangerous and i'm not going to talk about the obvious when it's stormy, when there's a hurricane, when there's a nor'easter, obviously that's dangerous. And I think for 95% of us, we won't get in there. We won't let our children in there. We'll talk to our mom about not getting in the ocean. And then there are those people that no matter what, they will get in. But in my 42 years of watching the deaths that we have in Florida and Georgia, 90% of them happen when the ocean is like it is today. It's relatively calm. That's when people get in. What I would love for people to focus on, if they don't want to be in the situation where they're floating in the rip current and they're panicking, even though everyone says, don't panic. I get it. After 42, over 42 years of surfing, I do. Um, know when the high tide is. At high tide, within a couple hours, is when the waves, whatever size they are, will be most powerful right on the beach where you get in. The closer you get to lower tide, no matter the size of the wave, one foot or ten foot, those bigger waves are going to be farther offshore to where you're probably not even going to get out there, number one. Number two at high tide is when you have your quickest drop-off from shallow water to deeper water. Very often at low tide, because our beach is pretty horizontal, you can go a long way before you get into deep water. So although it doesn't happen all the time, what I hear from lifeguards is frequently, uh, it's near high tide, so it's a strong beach break, disorients a person. They fall in or are suddenly in deeper water than they expect to be, and then they, that water pulls them out toward the rip current. So, um, and the nice thing about a high tide, and I say this as a meteorologist, is it's the most accurate part of the forecast because it's not weather forecasting, right? Truthfully, it's astronomy. I could tell you 20 years from now, if you're going to have a birthday party on the beach, when high tide is. Know when high tide is. And that's not me saying don't get in the water, but know when high tide is. Um, respect that. And um, I think you can go a long way, at least to keep your family and friends safer. My worst memory of swimming in Jack's Beach was uh, during high tide one July, and I got walloped by a wave that literally took me off my feet and rolled me Boom. through the sand Boom. to you're, the shore. You're nailing exactly. And 
Yes. And I don't think I've really gone much deeper than my, my, my thighs since then. And that's not because I'm scared of the water. It's just that that was such a vivid, pardon the pun, impact uh, to be rolled over the sand by the wave. And I know it was high tide because I could see the condo where we were hanging out for a party. Yeah. It wasn't the walk down the, 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 the low tide sands. Um, as a beach girl, what do you look for? I mean, do you look for suddenly uh, a weird wave pattern uh, that, that shows that the water's being pulled out? Uh, well, you know, I, I mentioned high tide because we always give it in the forecast. You can get it on, on, your, on your cell phone. And, and, and so you know when it is. Now, it's particularly significant here on the First Coast because we have a six-foot vertical difference from high tide to low tide. And so what that means is at low tide, you have this very shallow, gradual drop-off that wouldn't have a wave knocking you over. At high tide, you do. So, for instance, today, high tide is at 5 in the afternoon. Um, if I was going out there with family and friends after about 3 o'clock, I, I would have my antenna. Um, it's, it's, I mean, j just like we look at the clock for other things, I would really, I, I think that could help a lot if people would really would focus, when is high tide today? The other thing they need to focus on, and this came from Bay County Sheriff, uh, Tommy Ford wrote in a Facebook post this week uh, that he's beyond frustrated at the situation that we have tragic and unnecessary deaths in the Gulf and that his deputies were being yelled at and cursed at when they would try to tell people don't go in the water. He even states that he has seen two people drown in riptide. So if the lifeguard is there and the red flags are flying and they're visible, they're visible. When you drive on the beach, there's a sign. When you walk on the beach at the little boardwalk, there's a sign. And there are, there are flags flying from every lifeguard stand. Keep your eyes open and understand red means only wait in the water, right? Right. And, and yeah, I mean, let's face it. We, we see people who do that kind of stuff in all kinds of situations. So I'm really talking about uh, the nine out of ten of us in, in which the tragedy happens because maybe a daughter is caught, the father goes out to save the daughter. Um, I remember a situation in Amelia Island where um, there was a huge reunion one person went to save someone. Um, none of them could really swim well. And next thing you know, we had eight drownings. Yes. Um, so th that, that's another thing, that, that if someone is in danger, of course you want to go save them. Uh, but make sure you know what you're doing. And if the option is yelling to get the lifeguard to help you versus you doing it, you know, maybe you should do that. I, we had that incident uh, with, unfortunately, the Ukrainian 19-year-old uh, boy. Uh, that the people he went to go save ended up being okay, he ended up drowning himself. Uh, and we see that a lot where we're the hero, and I say that in a positive way, where the hero actually ends up being the one who drowns. And that image of the Baywatch TV show where the lifeguard's running with the float in their hand, the lifeguard has a float. If the lifeguard gets in trouble, the lifeguard has something to hold on to. But I'm glad you brought that up, and, and that's why I think it was a fantastic segue that you had uh, some surf music going, because let's say the lifeguards aren't around. Let's say it's up to you to be the hero. Grab something that floats. You know, I'm really glad you brought that up. Grab a surfboard. Grab something that floats. Uh, number one, if you, can, if you can get the drowning person, you can put them up on it. But another thing that, that unfortunately here tragically happens so many times, the lifeguards tell me about this, is that the hero, the person going in to save, is surprised that the person who's drowning, how strong they are. That very often the person who's drowning is panicking, they then grab the person who's trying to say it and pulls them down as down well. Down you go, yes. And if you have something that floats, I'm really glad you brought it up. You have something that floats, and that's you're, you're going to help things exponentially. And everybody on the beach these days has an inflatable. So, Tim Deegan, Chief Meteorologist, First Coast News, known you forever, have watched you, seen you. Thank you for the Thank words you, of Dan. wisdom this I weekend as the thousands hit the beach. And uh, we're here at First Coast Connect. We'll be back with some more interesting Fourth of July news right after this.